If we were to turn back the clocks to only a couple of months ago, many of you would have agreed that the Jordan Mylata experiment had sadly come to an end. The former rugby star, seventh round pick, was now in his third year with the Philadelphia Eagles, a crucial one for his development. But the off-season as we knew it was ripped away. There was no pre-season, no OTAs, and training camp was very limited. And the time we did see Mylata on the field, he was being roasted by Joe Osman again, again, and again. So when the news came out that Jason Peters was down and that our starting left tackle against the San Francisco 49ers would be Jordan Mylata, there was a unanimous sense of concern. Just how game ready would he be? What level is he looking to play at? And is there any life left in this experiment? I think it's safe to say we were all left very pleasantly surprised and in today's film room we're going to go back and look at Jordan Mylata's NFL debut and compare it to what we saw in his rookie year and year number two to get a real gauge of where he's developed and just how high that ceiling may now be. Before we get started though guys, as always, if you do enjoy this content, make sure you leave a like and drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you want to see more, it's the best way to support the channel. And as a thank you for doing so, we've got a couple of really exciting things to be working on. We promise we'll be bringing you guys the fire in 2020. And the first one is the ultimate Eagles group chat. This is absolutely free. We want to give something back to you guys. So we have partnered with Flick Sports, who are a group chat app designed specifically for sports fans and my aim here is to try and take down their Dallas Cowboys fan group so all you've got to do to be part of a group chat where there are weekly competitions giveaways and a community where you can interact with Eagles fans I'm in England okay I don't know many Eagles fans it's a great opportunity to get to make some new friends there's a link in the description down below that will take you to the app just hit download on that Join the group PSN Eagles Nation and it's that simple. You're one of the boys. We are already close to 150 members. We've only been active for a week, okay? It's a lot of fun. I would love for you guys to be a part of it and you get to annoy me 24-7. So if you hate me, what better time to join? All right, let's dive into some tape then. The first thing I want to look at here is Jordan Mylata's kick steps. It was one of the big concerns he had, I felt, in his rookie year where they were just too big. They were massive and it's understandable. His footwork as a whole was a bit of a concern. So before we finish this play, just look at how compact now these steps are. They're basically little shuffles. You can see him getting into the angle of the defender. What this enables him to do is get up and under without ending up with his head over his knees, which is what we saw so often where he'd be a bit sloppy on his kick steps, he'd lose balance and he'd be so top heavy because he's six for eight. We're not seeing that now. Mylata can now better leverage his size and this means that on ball rushes and such he's able to keep a leverage between himself and the defender without giving up a lot of turf. It means he can run the ring better without losing balance and often falling over and that means that Overall, that hand placement is a lot better because he's got the fundamental base to build on. His hands were normally pretty good, but often compensated by that poor lower body work. And now what we're seeing is someone that wants to invite contact into his chest so he can reset his hands and redirect the pass rusher. Now, let's not forget this man is six foot eight. So getting past him anyway is a bit of a problem. Doing it when he's well postured is a different task altogether. Jeff Stoutland really has worked wonders here. It's easy to forget just how raw my Lata was but looking at how compact he is here in just this one play alone speaks volumes. What we're going to see here is Mylata do a little shuffle outside, but he's not going to drive into the defensive end. He gets his hands up and under and more importantly sustains them and travels with the defensive end. Shakes off a spin move. Now Wentz, I don't really know what's doing there. That's when the pressure comes. Unfortunately, this pass was intercepted, but it's through no fault of Mylata who did everything right there. Now I know situationally it's different, but if you go back to his first ever game against the Steelers in preseason, look at how eager those hands are. He wants to get them on as soon as possible. The angle a bit different, I understand that, but it's the premise of him wanting to latch onto that defensive end. His shoulders aren't aligned properly, his head's over his knees, and it's a little bit sloppy. We're seeing a much more composed, a much calmer Jordan Mylata. And this means that he's just better equipped to handle a wider variety of pass rushing moves. Like right here, he's going to take on a rip move. For this to work, the defensive end needs to get his hip aligned with Mylata's hip and rip away. So the idea is that you bring that momentum up through the body. Because Mylata is able to better position himself, he can leverage his body so he doesn't have to be hit to hit with the player he can use his shoulders and those massive arms 
to drive him away while building from the bottom and using that power from the lower body as opposed to bleeding from the top and then letting his lower body sort of follow suit which is what we saw in year one and two. Now if we compare that to what we're seeing today in terms of side by side what we're gonna notice is someone that is able to just stay so much more upright when blocking. This play is a perfect example of that. Watch those kick steps again up and under and he's able to just become this stonewall blocker. What we used to see with Milata was just his eagerness to try and reach and drive away as opposed to letting that defender sit closer to him, staying compact and letting his body guide the play around. It's not something you really appreciate until you go back and look at the stark contrast between years 1, 2 and 3. It's really hard not to come away overwhelmingly impressed. I love this play because the defensive end tries driving into Milata can't and halfway through those legs have to start churning sideways then he gets thrown back. Now overall, the play is a sack, and the one thing I want to really quickly note, which isn't that big of a deal, but to me it is, is that after every play, the first thing he does is go to the nearest person on the ground and help them up. Really good sign of a team first guy. I know that's not what you're looking for in terms of like blocking fundamentals, but it's something I quite like. But oddly, the one thing we haven't really spoken about so far is his power. And we've just spoken about everything else. But that doesn't mean it's absent from his game. This is the Carson Wentz read option touchdown. And look at how far he drives the linebacker. Like, I'm still pretty sure he's been driven into the locker room as we speak. And if you're just looking for power, then you're going to find plenty of examples from that very game. Especially when it comes to run blocking. Like, look just how much traction he's going to gain here driving that defensive end all the way up about 10 yards away from the play. What really stands out there though is the finish that he's playing till the end of the play because that run stopped about halfway through that play. Mylata still makes sure he finishes it, gets the job done and plays to the whistle. I like that. The final play I want to show highlights just how much progress he's made and how much progress there is still to make which shows a very high ceiling. The first thing we see is Mylata drive a defensive tackle from the B gap into the A gap. Then he gets up field and takes on a linebacker. Now look at this play in terms of the bigger picture. If he can sustain this block for just a fraction of a second and drive the linebacker up field, like we all know he can, we've all seen this power, then Miles Sanders has a sweet one-on-one -on -one matchup with the safety. It's possible, we all know he can do it, he's got the size, he's got the power, but what we see is just the angle's a little bit sloppy. The linebacker gets off and makes a play. And overall, this is a great play from Milata to drive that defensive tackle, to get upfield and look for work. But that had always been another area of weakness in the run game. Getting upfield, finding that work and engaging with the block. And there is still clearly a lot of room to work with that. But overall, what we have seen from this game with Jordan Milata is a player that has gone from someone in year one who had raw fundamentals that were there but needed coaching. His footwork, for instance, was too sloppy and he was very top heavy. Year number two, we took a step forward. The footwork still wasn't ideal, but the hands were a lot more compact. And now we're seeing year number three, after being worked all training camp by Joe Osman, someone that just looks composed, like he's ready, like he's not going to see anything new or alien or that's going to surprise him or catch him off guard. He looks ready for whatever that defender's going to throw at him. Now, Pittsburgh is obviously going to present a very different challenge for Jordan Mylata, and I'm more than happy to continue doing this series and going game by game if you guys want to see it. So if that's the case, let me know down in the comments. But more importantly, guys, just let me know what you think about Mylata's progress. Is he a future thrown to a tackle position, or is Andre Dillard now forever going to be in the way? Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed today's video. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you soon.